put on my reading glasses. She said that we, when we speak about uh, socialism, we must not focus only on the material, financial aspects of socialism, but instead we need to focus on the central part of the evil nature of socialism, which is moral. So listen to her words. She said, we must not focus our attention exclusively on the material because though important, it is not the main issue. The main issues are moral. In warfare, said Napoleon, the moral to the material is as three to one. That's in motivating a person to act. You may think that in civil society, the ratio is even greater. The economic success of the Western world is a product of its moral philosophy and practice. You see, Margaret Thatcher was a big fan of us, of America and the Western world. And England at that time was called the sick man of Europe. She was unwilling to see her beloved country stay in, in a state of perpetual decline. And that's why she fought with her words and with her spine to rescue her country from the moral abyss that they were in. She said the economic results are better because the moral philosophy is superior. It is superior because it starts with the individual, with his uniqueness, his responsibility, and his capacity to choose. Surely this is infinitely preferable to the social estatist philosophy, which sets up a centralized economic system to which the individual must conform. That's what the current majority here in the Capitol and St. Paul are trying to do to you. It is one party rule, and they want you to conform to their will here in St. Paul. Margaret Thatcher said no to that in the United Kingdom. She said that when you are subject to a centralized economic system to which the individual must conform, that subjugates you, that directs you, and it denies you your right to free choice. Because choice is the essence of ethics. If there is no choice, if you have no choice, like we will not get in Obamacare, no choice in our health care, there will be no ethics. There will be no good. There will be no evil. Good and evil have meaning only in so far as man is free to choose. Choice in a free society implies responsibility on the part of the individual. There is no hard and fast line between economic and other forms of personal responsibility to self, to family, to your business, to your community, to your nation, to God. Morality lies yep. in choosing between feasible alternatives. A moral being is one who exercises his own judgment and choice on matters great and small, bearing in mind their moral dimension, right and wrong. Insofar as his right and duty to choose is taken away by the state, the party or the union, his moral faculties, his capacity for choice, atrophy. They go away. And he becomes a moral cripple in the same way as we should lose the faculty of walking, reading, seeing, if we are prevented from using them over the year. The socialists would take away most or all of these choices. A man would do what he was told by the state or by his union work where work was found for him, at the rate fixed for him, and the degree of effort permitted for him, he would send his children to school, where the education authority decided what the children would be taught, and the way that they are taught, irrespective of the parents' views. Sound familiar? Yeah. He would live in the housing provided by the state. He would take what he could get, give what he was obliged to give. This does not produce a responsible or a moral society. This does not produce a classless society. On the contrary, it produces the most stratified of all societies.
societies divided into two classes, the powerful and the powerless, the party bureaucratic elite and the manipulated masses. And are these rulers better fitted to make choices on our behalf or to dispose of our resources? Are they wiser, less selfish, more moral? What reason have we for supposing that they are? You see, that is the point. We lose the essence of who God made us to be. Moral beings, capable of choice, inherently able to defend ourselves and our families. And that's why what is happening in St. Paul is so morally reprehensible. When we are denied our right to keep and bear arms, when we are denied our right and our capacity to make choices for ourselves and for our families economically and over the moral values that we choose to embrace within our own families and for our children, you see this is the moral issue of our time. And just like we saw one party rule and dominate here in the state of Minnesota, I'm here to tell you that there is no fear among that party about the White House. They know it is theirs for the next four years, and they are using it to their advantage. They are not fearful that they will lose their stronghold over the United States Senate. They believe without a shadow of a doubt that Harry Reid will maintain his grip on the United States Senate. You see, all I the President the of the United stop. States needs is to defeat like 17 